Hey, welcome to 12 Tone Building Blocks, our monthly series about the fundamentals of music theory. Last time we touched on the idea of chord functions, or specific jobs that different chords in a key take on, but the comments indicated that I may have brushed by those a little too quickly, so this time I'd like to slow down and take a good long look at exactly how these functions work. As a refresher, we break chords in a key into three main groups, tonic function chords, dominant function chords, and subdominant function chords. Tonic function chords are the ones that provide a sense of rest. They're calm, they're stable, and they don't take a lot of mental energy to process. Unsurprisingly, the primary tonic function chord is the one chord built on the scale's root. It's like the home base of the key, and it's the strongest sense of rest you can find. But it's not the only one. Tonic function also includes the 6 minor and, usually, the 3 minor, each of which is only a single note away from the one chord. This is especially obvious if we use 7th chords. The 6 minor 7 includes all the notes of the 1 major triad, and the 1 major 7 has the 3 minor triad inside it. They're all very closely related sounds. Another thing to note here is that all the tonic function chords share one note in common, the third degree of the scale, which is kind of weird if you think about it. I mean, you'd expect the most important note to be the root, wouldn't you? But the third degree plays a critical role in defining what's called the modality of the scale, which is what gives the scale its overall color. Without the third degree, you get ambiguity. It's not clear whether it's major or minor, and that, it would appear, is a large part of what gives tonic function its strong sense of rest. The next chord function is dominant function. These are like an arrow pointing you back home. They're very unstable, and that creates a lot of tension that gets released when they resolve back to a tonic chord. The most common common dominant function chord is the 5 chord, often played as an appropriately named dominant 7th. You'll also sometimes see the 7 diminished, or 7 minor 7 flat 5, and all these chords have two notes in common, the 7th degree of the scale and the 2nd. These encircle the root, and they both want to collapse in towards it. The 7th degree's pull is especially strong because it's only a half step away, and that strength has earned it the nickname the leading tone in music theory circles. Dominant chords also frequently feature the 4th degree, which is a half step above the 3rd. As we mentioned earlier, the 3rd is also also a huge part of tonic function's overwhelming consonants, so this downward resolution creates another strong sense of release. Even more powerful is the relationship between the 7th and the 4th. They're a tritone apart, which is itself a very unstable interval that would want to collapse even if it weren't for the specific functions of its component notes. And finally, there's subdominant function. If you've been keeping track, you may have noticed that the only chords we haven't mentioned yet are the 4 and the 2 minor. They're sort of a bridge between the other two groups. They take you away from tonic function, but they don't point you back yet. They're also unstable, but unlike dominant function, that instability comes almost entirely from their relation to the key. There's two notes that these chords both share, the fourth degree of the scale and the sixth. Most of the work here is done by the fourth, though. It sits above the third just like in dominant function and disrupts the sense of rest that note provides. It introduces ambiguity, and that creates tension, but it lacks the leading tone, so it's not quite so directional. An interesting thing about subdominant function is that how its chords feel changes depending on whether you're using triads or seventh chords. The four major triads triad contains the root of the key, which gives it a little extra grounding to help set it apart from dominant function, whereas the 2 minor triad feels more adrift. The 2 minor 7, though, picks the root up itself, making it more grounded, while the 4 major 7 adds the 3rd degree, making it almost too stable to really serve as a subdominant chord. Of course, they both work either way, but which one is best depends on how many notes you're planning to use, and I think that's really cool. And that's chord functions. Hopefully this cleared up a couple questions, but before we go, here's a really simple rule of thumb for identifying them. You just have to look for the 3rd, 4th, and 7th degrees of the scale. If a chord has the 3rd but not the 4th, it's gonna sound consonant and at rest, and thus tonic. If it's got the 4th but not the 7th, it'll be unstable and ungrounded, making it subdominant. And if it's got the 7th but not the 3rd, it'll be dissonant and directional, making it dominant. Of course, that doesn't take into account chords that aren't in the key themselves, but that's a topic for another time. Until then, thanks for watching. Building Blocks was made possible thanks to our patrons on Patreon, so if you want to see more stuff like this, please consider supporting. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.